Hi, everybody. Welcome to your lesson that's all about the periodic table um, and the elements that you can find on it, okay? So we've got some new vocabulary for you in this lesson. The first word that you're going to need to be familiar with is period. Now, this is a horizontal row on the periodic table, so horizontal meaning side to side, okay? Now, all elements in the same period have the same number of energy levels. Now, if you remember from a previous lesson, an energy level is the same thing as an electron shell, and those are those rings that are on the outer part of an atom. Remember that electrons are on those energy levels, on those um, shells that are on the outside part of the atom. Protons and neutrons are in the nucleus, but the electrons are on those rings, those energy levels on the outer part of the atom, okay? So all elements in the same period are all gonna have the same amount of energy levels. So for example, um, I'm gonna use my little pointing tool here, here, but every element that's in say this second row is going to have two rings, two energy levels. Remember that's because two electrons can fit on the innermost ring, one, two, and then from there on after, we've got to have a new ring, okay? So as we go down, the number of rings that we have to accommodate all those electrons are more and more and more. Now let's look at groups. So each of the 18 vertical columns in the, the periodic table are groups. We also use the word families to describe groups. So you might hear those interchangeable. Okay, um, elements in the same group have the same number of valence electrons. Remember, valence electrons are the ones that are on the outermost shell, with the exception of the transition metals. So, for example, um, here we have uh, this, let's say right here, this element is going to have five atoms on its outermost shell, or atoms, sorry, five electrons on its outermost shell. It's gonna have five valence electrons. It's gonna have three energy levels because it's on the third row. And on that third energy level, there's going to be five electrons. That is how our periodic table is set up. Now, like I said, family is a grouping of elements that have the same kind of characteristics. You often will see groups and families together. Uh, and then chemical properties. This is a term that I need you to know. Chemical properties are relating to how an atom is going to react with other atoms. So, um, for example, if there is an atom with only one valence electron, so anyone that's in this group, Okay, anyone that has one valence electron, meaning it has one electron on its outer shell, it's really going to be ping-ponging around trying to search for other atoms to bond with. That's why I told you in a previous lesson that I remember valence electrons as Velcro electrons. V for valence, V for Velcro, because these are the electrons that are going to try to attach themselves to another atom so that they can bond. They're very reactive, okay? Whereas elements um, that have atoms with eight valence electrons, they're full. They've got nice, happy electron shells, rings. They're full. They're kind of floating around all nice and happy. They don't really want to react very much. They're stable. They're not ping-ponging around like the other guys are who are trying to find someone to bond with. They're happy as they are, so they're less reactive. So that's when, when, when we talk about chemical properties. We're talking about how reactive or not reactive an atom might be. Okay, so remember that the arrangement of the periodic tables um, is very particular, okay? Elements are placed in order from smallest to greatest in atomic numbers, okay? So the smallest atomic number is gonna be at the top left, and then as you go to the right and down, we're getting greater. 
Okay, elements that are similar types are going to be placed together. So metals with metals, non-metals with non-metals. We've got your transitions. We've got your metalloids. All of these types are placed accordingly and together on the periodic table. And then elements with similar properties, remember how reactive or non-reactive they are, are also placed near each other in the correct group, right? So here is an example of your periodic table. I want you to get very familiar with the way this looks. Like I said, the um, atoms um, are arranged in accordance with how many atomic numbers or by atomic number or how many protons they have. So remember, hydrogen has one proton, whereas this one down here has 86. So 86 protons. So remember, we're going from uh, smallest to biggest, okay? And also, like I said, we've got our groups are in those columns. And groups tell us how many valence electrons they have, how many electrons they have on their outermost ring. Remember, if you don't have a lot on your outermost ring, you're going to be very reactive because you're trying to bond with somebody. If you're good, if you've got a full outer ring, nice and full with eight valence electrons, you're fine. You're not as reactive. Okay, let's look at periods a little bit more closely. Okay, remember that periods go horizontally. There are seven periods. So anyone in this top period, you've got one ring. Remember, you can hold two electrons on that ring that's closest to the nucleus. So hydrogen and helium, they have two electrons or one or two electrons. So after helium, like lithium, you got to have another ring because that's got three electrons. So it would have a second ring, which is why it's in row two, but it would have one electron on its outermost ring. That third electron would be on the outermost ring by itself. It's got one valence electron. I hope this is making sense. If it's not, reach out to your teachers at any time. Always happy to help, okay? All right, so remember that periods run across the table horizontally. Periods are numbered from one to seven, okay? Periods are numbered from one to seven. Do, do, do. I'm gonna write this down. Here we go. Periods run horizontally. Okay, that's from side to side. And they're numbered from one to seven. So at total, you could have seven electron rings in, on an atom. They have to have a lot of uh, uh, electrons to fill seven rings, but it's possible. All elements in a period will have the same number of energy levels. Um, which contain electrons, okay? All elements that are within the period, within the row, side to side, are gonna have the same number of energy levels, okay? So from period one, they're all gonna have one energy level. Period two, everyone's gonna have two energy levels. Period five, five energy levels. All right, let's continue. Boop. So here we have um, our groups, our groups. Remember that groups go down vertically. There are those columns. Remember that groups tell us the number of electrons that are in the outermost ring. Okay, now remember when we learned how to draw an atom? Let's use this as an example, okay? So let's say we've got, um, let's use carbon as an example. I'm going to circle carbon here. Carbon has six, an atomic number of six, so we know that that's six protons. I'm gonna draw them here. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's got an atomic mass of 12, and so if that means that the mass is 12, the protons are six, neutrons must be six, because six plus six equals 12, so I'm gonna draw six neutrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I've got my nucleus set up. 
my nucleus is good to go. I'm going to highlight my nucleus so that I know that that's when one little part of my atom is drawn, the nucleus. Okay, but now it's time for my electrons. And re remember that electrons are the same number as your protons. So if I have six protons, I've got six electrons. So here we go. I'm going to draw my first ring for my electrons. Right there. Boop. Remember that only two can fit on that innermost ring, on that first ring. Okay, only two. Let's see, what color should I use? I'm going to use red. There's one, there's two. All right, I don't have two, I have a total of six, right? Six protons, six electrons. So I've got to add some. So let me add another ring. <clears throat> right here. I've already drawn two, which means I need four more if I want to get to six, right? So let me add four more. Ready? One, two, three, four. Okay, so from our periodic table, we should be able to tell that we have four valence electrons, four on the outermost ring. Hey, look, we're in column 14 which is four valence electrons. Check. I have two rings, which means I should be in uh, period one, two. Am I in period two, row 14? Yes, I am. I'm in period two, row 14. I hope that that kind of helps you understand how these things are kind of graphed, so to speak, on the periodic table, okay? so. Remember that the groups are telling us how many electrons we have in the um, outermost ring, okay? With the exception of the transition metals, which is why it picks up at 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And it also will tell you how many rings you have in the periods, okay? Now, let's talk about that here in terms of our fill in the blank questions. Here we go. So groups run down the periodic table vertically. They go up and down vertically. Groups are also called families. Okay. Groups are numbered from 1 to 18. They tell us how many valence electrons, elements in the same group have the same number of, I'm going to write VE, valence electrons in the outer energy level except for the transition metals, which is why we skip for that little bit, okay? Groups element, grouped elements behave chemically similarly. They're similar, okay? Remember, that's because if they have the same number of valence electrons, they're all gonna behave the same. Everyone in this first column are gonna be really reactive trying to Velcro themselves to another atom. Whereas everyone in the last column, column 18, with eight valence electrons, they're steady, they're happy. They don't need to react as much, okay? They've got similar chemical properties. All right, you guys, that's it for this lesson. If you have any questions, please reach out. We're always happy to help. Good luck.